Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to For Fantasy Sake. At Water Cooler Studios, we have a lot to bring in the coming months, and it starts with football. So let's jump into some segments right here. First segment is a new one. It's called Despite Popular Belief. These are players I believe will be valuable or invaluable despite what most experts say. Now, of course, this is not going to be the game changer, the person that's going to win your league, but this could be some helpful tips in order for you to master the bench trades or getting a player that might be underrated or overrated in some drafts. Now, starting with number one, I believe Miles Sanders is a valuable asset because of the fact that he said, don't draft me. He's falling on many boards. I know in most of the leagues that I've been in, he has fallen to like round seven, eight, nine even. And I think that's ridiculous for a starting running back in the league. I know people are saying he might not start for long because of his health issues, but as long as he stays healthy, I see there's no problem with keeping him on your bench or even as a flex option because he's a good rushing and receiving back. Number two, I have Darren Waller. Of course, he suffered from a lot of injuries last year and a lot of double teams and kind of quite a few drops as well. But I do believe that he's going to have a solid comeback season despite what some people may say. I think that Devontae Adams and the emergence of hunter renfro is a good thing for him there's gonna be less double teams on him and that's going to mean he's gonna be more open and he's a great route runner he's good with uh contested catches so the less people on him the better and the more points so i don't see why there's a problem with drafting darren waller as your tight end one in many leagues and finally i have tyler lockett uh health is the only thing to worry about with lockett in my opinion the defense will need a deep passing attack in order to run the ball as much as they plan to with Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker. And I know Geno Smith doesn't have the best arm. Drew Locke has a pretty decent arm. Uh, but I think that Tyler Lockett is a pretty good receiver to have either on your bench as a flex option. Or if you have wide receiver three, he might be a stretch three. As long as he stays healthy, he kind of does put up solid fantasy seasons. I know he's inconsistent. I know that's been a thing, but maybe with the new quarterback, maybe... He becomes a favorite and we will see what happens but i do believe that he is underrated in drafts he falls pretty far honestly and um you know hopefully he falls to you now let's jump into the more less valuable or a little overrated players in my opinion and of course this is no shot to them they're obviously good players they made it to the league and they're probably getting drafted pretty high if i'm calling them overrated Number one, I'm going to go with Amon Ross St. Brown. He is a second-year player out of USC. He played excellent on the Lions the last couple weeks of his rookie campaign. He had a couple breakout games, but with more offensive weapons incoming, aka DJ Chark and um, Jamison Williams, it will be tough to see St. Brown as a viable option behind the wide receiver 2-3 range, while some people are drafting him as their 1-2 range. I do believe that he is a solid receiver, he's speedy, he's quick, and he's probably going to get a lot of work other than just receiving. He might have a couple of jet passes, you know, jet sweeps. He might have a couple running plays, honestly. He's pretty electric. But the thing is, I think that due to the increased amount of speed in Jamison Williams, once he gets healthy, and the deep threat DJ Chark, I think there might be a, a little bit of a disconnect between him and Goff in orders of target share. So I think that him himself is very talented, but I think in fantasy, he's a little overrated. I think people are drafting him too high. Now, moving on, I have Josh Jacobs. Obviously, this is a player that many people talk about before the season, don't draft him anyways. And then Kenyon Drake was released, which kind of made him shoot up the board with some people. I still believe that he should stay down. Um, even with the departure of Kenyon Drake, McDaniels typically runs a running back by committee. And Zamir White, the rookie, Looks pretty dang good on that offense, it seems like. I've heard a lot of good things from camp, it sounds like, according to Twitter, of course. But I don't know. Josh Jacobs, can he stay healthy? And is he going to survive that running back by committee when he his fifth-year option was declined? This is his last year. So I'm not sure. If the Raiders don't trust him, then why should you trust him? Of course, a talented player. No disrespect. Finally, I have Travis Etienne. He'll definitely get work early as James Robinson is recovering from an AC, uh, not ACL, an Achilles injury. But once Robinson returns fully, his reps will probably be very limited, mostly to the receiving game is my guess. 
Obviously, he'll still be involved. Trevor Lawrence and him were college teammates, but I still think that James Robinson is probably going to be the primary back, especially since he's a little bit bigger. And um, this is his first big injury, and Travis Etienne, of course, suffered a foot injury last year that held him out all of last year. So I think there's a little bit of concern there. I don't think he's injury prone, but I do believe that James Robinson is a better running back in his own way compared to Travis Etienne. So I'm pretty sure just be aware because he's, he's getting drafted pretty high. He's getting drafted with anticipation of him being the RB1 when in reality James Robinson still is a very good running back that you might have to watch out for if you're drafting him. Now let's move on to key matchups. These are players that I believe are going to have an amazing game and possibly a revenge game for some of these guys, um, including number one, Baker Mayfield versus the Browns. I think he's healthy and he's facing his former team with better weapons in the receiving core than last year. Last year, it was headlined by Donovan Peoples-Jones most of the time. Um, just The Browns are a decent team with receiving, but they don't have that star power, and his team really did not have too many big names. Obviously, Javer Obviously, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham left uh, throughout the year, throughout last year, and uh, he was kind of left with a couple of, you know, decent options, but, you know, it's always better to have DJ Moore on your team, which he has, and Christian McCaffrey, who is a much more elusive receiving back than anyone on the Browns team. No disrespect to Nick Chubb, of course, or Kareem Hunt, but... Christian McCaffrey, when healthy, is a game changer, and Baker Mayfield will have him as his security blanket versus the Browns' defense, which is very decent, very good, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to contain DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, and possibly even Robbie Anderson. While Baker Mayfield is fully healthy, that shoulder looks good. It seems like they are right behind him as their starter, and that's got to bring him a lot of confidence. Confidence wins games. <laughs> Moving on, I have Naimi and Hines versus Houston. Obvi the obvious choice in fantasy is to start jonathan taylor forever start him every single week it's probably a free 18 to 25 points um but i would want to go with a different direction i still think you should start nami and hines at the flex or possibly rb2 depending on your situation i think that houston linebackers are a weak spot on the defense that defense is pretty much a weak spot on the team but there's a couple of good options for them but nami and hines is in the backfield and i think that he's gonna get a lot of receiving reps i think that uh, Matt Ryan is a solid quarterback, but he's a little bit older. He's probably going to dump off more, and I know Naomi and Hines is a solid receiving option for him. He should get plenty of targets in the backfield, especially for PPR leagues. This is a must start for this week. Now moving on to the final man, I'm going to go to Julio Jones versus Dallas. He's the third receiver on a stacked offense. Dallas may not be able to defend them all, and Julio has been the best player in camp by far, they have said, in Tampa Bay camp. Julio Jones has returned to his form, Todd Bowles has been said, has said, and uh, it just looks like he's probably going to get a lot of work because Chris Godwin recovering from an ACL injury, I know he's fully healthy, but it seems like, you know, you need to have at least one or two games to get back to speed. Mike Evans, he's probably going to be double covered, but Julio Jones is dangerous, and I really hope to see he is back to his prime form. Obviously, you can only hope for that, but maybe a couple games, and I think that Dallas is a solid game to see because, you know, Trayvon Diggs, he's solid as a cornerback, but against Julio Jones, I think I'm going to take Julio Jones in that matchup, especially if they're saying he's returned to his form. That's exciting, and I'd love to see that. Now, finally, we're going to moving on to grading League of Beasts drafts. This is going to be the first of 12 grades that we're going to be talking about in this series of course we only have 12 players so we're going to grade one at a time for 12 episodes and then we will move on from that of course number episode number one we're going to be grading andrew andrew's draft he had the number one overall pick and um yeah let's just take a look at the team okay so the number one overall pick actually was traded in our draft on draft day he decided I didn't want the number one overall pick. I would rather trade down for some value. So he traded down to pick number two. Um, pick number one is Chris Craven. He has now traded up to pick number one, and he took Jonathan Taylor. Andrew decided he would like to take Chris McCaffrey. He'd like to take the risk. I do like that risk factor. 
I also think it's, you know, it's a little tough, but he took him number one, but he also made the trade of the century, it seems like, because he traded back one spot and got a seven round upgrade, which means he traded his first pick for the second pick. And then in return, he swapped his 12th round pick into his fifth round pick. Now that is an amazing trade, and I really do applaud him for that because that's a seven round upgrade. You are getting two fifth round picks and no 12th. That is something that I don't really see, especially on draft day. This is our first draft day trade in this league. Um, but of course, his offense is rounded out by Josh Allen, Mike Williams, Juju Smith-Schuster, Brendan Ayuk, Chris McCaffrey, Cam Akers, Mark Andrews, and J.K. Dobbins. That's a solid starting offense. Josh Allen is considered the best quarterback in fantasy this year. Mike Williams is a very solid wide receiver two in his own offense, and he's probably going to be a lot of wide receiver ones in many leagues if you go RB heavy. Juju Smith-Schuster, a first-year receiver in Kansas City. Um, first year in Kansas City, I should say. He's suffering a knee injury, but it seems to be that he's good to go, and this should be pretty exciting to watch in Kansas City with a pass-heavy offense and Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. Brandon Ayuk has been considered a favorite of Trey Lance's, so I think that he is a solid option for wide receiver three. Christian McCaffrey is Christian McCaffrey. No need to explain. Cam Akers, a solid running back. Hopefully, he's fully recovered from his Achilles tear last year. And maybe he'll end up being a very solid RB2 for him. And maybe he'll open some eyes because a lot of people are dodging him in drafts. Mark Andrews, widely considered one of the best tight ends in the league. And possibly the best tight end in fantasy this year. So that is a very solid pick for him as well. And to round off this starting lineup, J.K. Dobbins. If he, when he stays healthy, he could be very solid. But who knows because they run in running back committee. Running back by committee in Baltimore. So we shall see what happens there. Now... Let's move to the bench. That's where things get interesting. We don't have a defense or kicker in this league. We felt like it was um, too much of a coin flip to get a really good defensive performance and kicker performance compared to actually playing with the players that we enjoy. So moving to the bench, he has Marquez Valdez Scandling, another first year receiver to Kansas City. DeAndre Hopkins suspended, but he will be a very solid option for Kyler Murray's offense after six games. Trey Lance, of course, we were just talking about him. He could be a really interesting stack if he ends up being a good quarterback for fantasy. Mark Ingram, he told me he drafted him for Alvin Kamara in case there's a suspension coming. Chuba Hubbard, he always needs to have his backup for Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Michael Gallup, another solid option. He's, once he comes back from his ACL injury, he's going to be pretty good in that offense. Boston Scott, possible Miles Sanders replacement, but we'll see. Chris Olave, New Orleans wide receiver. He's going to be the wide receiver two slash three, I believe. Probably the slot receiver in that offense. He's going to be electric. I really am excited to see what he does. And for Andrew's draft, I honestly am pretty impressed with what he did with the first pick, technically. Um, I'm going to give his draft a B plus because I think that, honestly, the first pick is a really tough uh, place to draft in fantasy. But I think he did a really good job navigating that. And I think that... Uh, trading back was probably a very good decision because I believe that is what got him DeAndre Hopkins in the fifth round and or not no I believe that got him Brandon Ayuk actually so I give him a B plus I think that's a really good draft I know Yahoo is you know weird with their uh, draft grades or maybe I'm just a bad drafter but uh, once we get to mine I'll talk about mine and talk about my way of thinking and for now, though, that is Andrew's draft. I am very impressed. That's a B plus for me. And that just about wraps up this episode. So I will be talking to you guys next week. We'll be covering week one action and some more segments for you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And we will see you guys sometime this week. Hopefully, we have a lot of football stuff coming out for you guys. Take care. Enjoy the games. And please win your matchup this week. Peace.